Welcome to From Betrayal to Breakthrough. I'm Dr. Debbie Silber, and today's guest is Zoe Thompson, speaking for Zoe. Sometimes life strips away the person who you knew yourself to be. When you rise from the ashes, you are given the opportunity to build something stronger and more powerful. Times of adversity build an inner strength that you can use in a positive way to rise, to thrive. That's what I did. This is my story. 2005 was my catalyst for change to leave an unhealthy marriage and lifestyle and rise from the ashes. What started out as a journey of recovery became a journey of mental and physical strength to become a more powerful version of me. I'm excited to introduce you to Zoe, who is another glowing example of someone taking their trauma and turning it into transformation. Wake up calls are incredible opportunities and catalysts for change. So get ready to hear exactly what happened to Zoe, what served as the inspiration to change, and exactly how she did it. Got you curious? Hope so. Here we go. Okay, everybody. Today I'm talking to Zoe Thompson, and you know I'm always bringing you these amazing stories of the crash and burn and, of course, the rise. And we have another amazing example of it, and I think you're going to learn so much from my guest today. Welcome, Zoe. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So before we get to the whole transformation, of course, we have to get to the part of what caused it in the first place. So can you share some backstory with us? Sure. So this this goes back a little while ago now, um, which is good. The good news. Um, so the back story for me is that I was uh, married. Um, I was married for um, a few years, and I was actually working for the police at the time. So I was working full time. Had a young child, um, but the marriage was both violent and abusive. So I lived two lives for quite a few years. So as you can imagine, when you work for the police telling people that you are a domestic abuse, domestic violence victim is a tough situation to be in. And so I hid that for a, a long time. In fact, I hid it for the entire marriage um, and sort of put my uniform on in the mornings and went off to work and lived, lived a very secret life at home. Um, but on the, on the outside, anybody who had met me and those that were working with me and for me were, would have seen a very happy person um, but it's the reality was not was not what was going on uh, behind closed doors at home and and before you go on with your story how did you do that I, I know with me any emotion I'm feeling it, well, there it is I, I just can't hide it how did you sort of compartmentalize it where it's like this was going on at home so against what what you stood for even as yeah. a police uh, policewoman so how did you manage that so I think that's the interesting thing is I think police training helps you to compartmentalize. It helps you to take that step back and disconnect. So I think that was part of it. But I think there was something about putting that uniform on in the morning and going into work and just almost becoming a different persona. You know, you as a, a leader, as a manager, as somebody in that kind of role, people look at you to be this empowered person who's confident and all of those things so I think the uniform really helped with that and I think also it gave me some breathing space of what was going on so I think it worked for me it gave me that escapism of being somebody else for a few hours outside of the home mm -hmm. wow okay brilliant so then okay so here you are living this sort of double life and what happened the catalyst for change for me, there were so many, so many examples or so many experiences that I think led up to it that really should have been the catalyst for change, but weren't. Um, and then unfortunately, uh, the London bombings, the terrorist bombings that happened um, back in 2005, we lost a close family friend. And when we had her funeral, there was a lot of conversation in the church of you know, people were saying, oh, if she, you know, she'd be looking down now and she would be seeing people here. And I felt really exposed because I'd hidden things from so many people. And I think also it was the wake up call of looking around the church and thinking, if this was me, the, the same people would be at my funeral. It'd be the same families, the same friends. And then I think when, you know, the, that moment where her family carried the coffin down I just 
I just had this moment where I thought if I don't do something it it will be me you know there will be another funeral and this time it will be me and it'll be the same people in the church and it'll be the same people mourning and her life was really really sadly taken away and so it gave it I felt like I had that second chance her life was taken but I felt like I had that moment of okay you can you can make some changes you can walk away from this you can make make some really tough decisions but you can do this and you can do this now for her and you can do this for you and you can do this for, for your son and so that, and that was a change for me yeah and I, I love that you said that because sometimes if we're so afraid to do something we need some other reason we need some other motivations so this you know so often for parents it could be they're doing it for the kids mm-hmm. right or where they just feel like they can't do it but they'll do it for the kids and it sounds like this was if you were you know, to get you to move past that fear, to help you over that hurdle was, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do this for her. Absolutely. It was, it was that, I think we all have that thing in the back of our head, don't we, where we, we like to think that we're immortal. We're going to be here forever. and We've got days and days to do what we want to do. And it just, it just hit me straight between the eyes of yeah. think anything could happen at any time. And you've got to, you've, you've got to push past all of the things that you fear to to live live that life and and now every year July 7th I take that moment to reflect am I living the life that I want to live am I doing the things that I want to do am I happy am I fulfilled so every year that's my memorial to her of checking that check-in yeah and 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 it's it's so um it's amazing how a crisis can always serve as that launch pad to transformation mm-hmm. if we use it in that way. Yeah. But so often we'll, you know, we'll have this really painful experience and get so stuck in our story. And at the end of the day, we still have our same problem and we have our same story and that's mm-hmm. all we have. So it's, um, you know, I remember in uh, my first TEDx, Stop Sabotaging Yourself, I remember saying when the pain of where you are becomes greater than the fear of the unknown that's when you jump absolutely it sounds like that that was a moment of pain Mm -hmm. for you where you just said I don't know what else there is but it's better than this yeah I I knew that it was not going to be easy and and it took 12 months for the an opportunity for me to be able to move out safely came about but I knew that once I took that first step that was it forward facing not looking back focused on what next okay now you've done this what next okay now you've done that what next and just to keep that momentum going of keeping keeping moving forward and how did you manage the fear because it's not even just fear of the unknown this is fear of of being hurt yeah I went straight into action mode I went straight into that survival instinct I think it's great when you're you know it's a parent as a parent and you have a child to look after and protect I think that really helped of just keeping just keeping moving forward keeping moving focused focus on the things that you can do taking control of what I could take control of really focusing on actions that I could take so that I could see that change was happening yeah. and that the the emotional change that that didn't <laughs> that I think that again the comp- compartmentalized that just got tucked away of not now I can't deal with that now I'll just right. get into the actions that needed to be taken and I'll work that bit out later and it was some time later but I did I did work through that eventually and give us an idea of some of the actions that and and, and I, I love that you're saying this because um you, you know my listeners viewers know I talk about the five stages from betrayal to breakthrough stage three is survival survival mm-hmm. instincts emerge and it it's this this is the challenge though that's the stage we get stuck in so often because once we figured out how to survive we don't know there's anything better than that so that's sort of where we park ourselves, you know, and we're like, okay, I'm just surviving. And it just becomes a way of life where you're just stuck in that survival where it is. It's very um, action oriented. And then that's it. And our emotions are completely tucked away. So I want to get to the emotional piece of it, but walk us through even just some action steps that had you feeling I'm moving forward. So I think the key for me was that 
I had some physical changes to make as well. So over, over the period of the marriage, I had gained a huge amount of weight. I think mentally and physically was not in a great place. Mm -hmm. And the physical changes felt very easy to make. Um, so, and, and I think by doing that, it gave it gave me that feeling of being in control and you can see yeah. the differences people see the differences so you get that encouragement from other people because people can see that you are making changes and so I think that really helped and I felt different I looked different I felt different I started to carry myself differently and I I recognize now that you know, there were there were lots of changes under the surface that I know that I had parked, I just wasn't ready to deal with. So I just started to tackle the ones that I could. And I think physical changes helped me to see that the change was happening. So you, you know, wake up in the morning, you look in the mirror, change is happening. You go to the gym, you work out, you feel the change right. is happening. You're getting stronger, you're getting fitter. And I think the gym for me as well really helped me to push past some of those barriers so you talk about fear and holding yourself back yeah. fitness for me was a great way to push myself past the mental barriers of I can't do that and and going through those uncomfortable uncomfortable stages I love that for so many reasons first of all when it comes to the the physical changes you can make when your world feels so completely chaotic like everything has been taken out of control this is one of the things that you do control so i know it, it sounds so silly like to to so many people the thought of because i know we do this within the pbt institute where we do focus on health and you may think early on well, I, I'm just trying to survive here, but the, but it's very strategic. It's mm. not so you look good in your skinny jeans. Like that's not the purpose. The purpose is your life is spinning out of control and you need proof that there's something you can control. Yeah. And if it's this, that's okay. At the same time, you're feeling better. You're clearing out, you're, you know, you're losing the brain fog. You're becoming stronger. You're holding yourself a little differently. And what I also like is, there's a link between physical strength and mental strength. I'll never forget. I started as a personal trainer 30 years ago. And I remember working out with someone who said, who was going through a divorce. Mm -hmm. And she said, Debbie, becoming strong helps me become mentally strong to yeah. work through this divorce. And 100%. I never forgot that. There's that link between yeah. the physical strength and the mental strength. And so that was absolutely my experience. Yeah. Just go, stepping into the gym. Go working, being introduced to strength training and being able to really challenge myself. And I, I noticed that as I was challenging myself more in that environment, I was getting the confidence to challenge myself more outside. You know, it was in work, you know, going for, for promotion and speaking up and finding my voice. And that just the confidence just grew from a very safe space. Mm -hmm. in a very controlled environment into, mm -hmm. into day-to-day -day life. Right. So, okay. So you were feeling physically better and it was helping mentally on some level because mm -hmm. now you had the strength and the confidence to do things that you wouldn't do. What I want to get to the emotional piece and, and yeah. maybe it didn't happen just yet. What happened next? The, well, the strength training took off in ways that I had not expected. And I ended up competing as a strong woman. For, oh, wow. So I ended up in a very competitive environment, which again, just tested that mindset on a different level. At the same time, as, as that was all sort of taking off, I was made redundant from, from the police. So that all happened around the same time. So again, it tested that sort of mindset, that resilience mm -hmm. in a different way. And so when I came away from working for the police through the redundancy and started to look at uh, coaching and self-development training, I signed up to do the an NLP course, so neuro-linguistic programming. Mm -hmm. And I turned up on day one, said, I'm working as a coach, I'm here for my professional development. Wow, what it was a personal journey. Every moment of that training was became my personal journey of dealing with everything that had happened. So although I turned up as a professional, as part of my professional development to learn about NLP, learn different techniques, to learn more about coaching, it became a, a real personal 
journey for me and and understanding the marriage understanding him understanding me understanding the emotions that came with it and it just unraveled and then through the techniques and things that I learned on the course was able to start to put it back in a way that worked well for me and for those who aren't familiar with NLP, can you explain it and explain uh, some of the strategies, the reason for it, what it does, and maybe even specific strategies that you that really move the needle for you? Mm. So neurolinguistic programming talks about the it being the language of the mind. So the way we think, the way that we talk to ourselves, the language that we use in conversation in our own heads, but also with other people can be really powerful. One of the key things for um, NLP is that they talk about how people act with good intentions. And even though those good intentions can have a negative impact on other people, understanding the good intentions and people's values and people's beliefs and people's experiences can help us to understand people's behavior. And that for me was a deal breaker, being able to sit there and understand. And you talked about this in your TEDx talk about how it's it's to you. It's not about you that so many of his behaviors, so many of the things that had happened, they weren't about me. They were about him not having the ability to communicate, him losing control, all of these things that it was never it. It was never about me. I was there. I was involved. And that also for me helped me to understand the role that I played in that and look at how I responded to certain things. And also for me to look forward and think, if I'm in a situation like that again, how do I want to respond differently Mm -hmm. so that I can take control of that situation early and deal with it early and be able to to manage that? So for me, the, the key thing with NLP was understanding that people's viewpoints, people's beliefs, people's values are very different, then doesn't make one more important than the other, but it will impact how people speak and how people behave. And that was that was really important for me to be able to work through my own experiences, but also now in coaching and being able to help people to see things from different perspectives and see things from different viewpoints. So to walk around their own challenges and look at them in different ways, to see things differently, because that quite often is when those breakthroughs happen, where people see an opportunity or a different option that they might not have seen before, and that then helps them move forward. You know, it's it's such a... um... I can see it as being so freeing and so liberating when all of this time you're thinking, what's wrong with me? Why mm-hmm. is it happening to me? And then you you realize it, it really isn't about me. I'm the unlikely, I'm the recipient of this, uh, but it's really their, you know, their issue, their challenge, whatever. And it's almost like when you're in a picture on a wall, you know, and then you sort of get out of the picture and you look at it and you're like, that's what's going on here. And you, you see it so clearly. And it sounds like NLP really helped you with that. Yeah. Where, you know, um, well, let me ask you, was there, was it a specific NLP program that really resonated with you? Cause I know there were so many out there. I, the training that I did was um, quite somatic. So we did lots of in, you know, moving with, moving the body and and that worked really well for me and that the it's the the language the the reframing all of those things I have found really really useful but for me closing your eyes and explaining things I think this is great for especially for somebody who's experienced trauma Mm -hmm. to not have to find the words to describe what they're feeling or describe what they're going through but to be able to show you through body through movement and to be able to change that with your body with movement and in that in the same as you're doing that it changes and reframes it in your head is was for me was was really powerful because I hadn't talked about it I had I hadn't ever sat down with somebody and said this is what's happened or this is how it feels or this is what I'm trying to work through so for me to just close my eyes and it wasn't comfortable it wasn't an easy thing to do but to use movement and to describe and move my body to be able to to describe how I was feeling and and move through those emotions through movement was was really impactful for me and it's something that I've done with clients 
although we've we've done it through words as well but I think sometimes that can be really helpful especially if it's really uh, you know it's reliving when we talk about things we relive the experience don't we so for me it's been really important to not get caught up in that repetition of the story and move things forward so for me it was really important to make sure that that chapter is closed and when I talk about it now I'll talk about it because there's a reason to talk about it talk about it with purpose and I'll talk about it very much from this is what happened next so Mm -hmm. it feels positive when I talk about it Right. That makes total sense. And I love that it was somatic body based. Uh, it had that that's where a lot of the training came from, mm-hmm. because that's where all of this trauma lives. So even, you know, we can do all the talk therapy in the world and it's only hitting us from that cognitive level. But it's the issues are in the tissues. I mean, this is how so many diseases are formed. These stress related issues, symptoms, conditions, mm-hmm. disease. And it's, it's, you know, it just gets stuck and we need a way to, to safely um, release some of this. And, and I, and I have had so many incredible experts on this show talk about the many different uh, somatic body-based alternatives. There's not a right or wrong one. And they're all, uh, they're all so important. They all have a place. It's really finding the one that resonates for you. And it sounds like NLP really was wonderful. And NLP is always something, and the reason why I asked you that question, it was personal too. Uh, I've always wanted to, <laughs> to become trained in NLP. Ah, so um, I'm going to be, I'm going to be looking into a program. You know, I'm just one of those lifelong learners and I just love the idea Same. of any other way I can support our members within the, within the community. And I think that's the thing for me is it's the, the tools in the toolbox, isn't it? When we work with different people, we need a, we need a good full toolbox of things that we can draw on to be able to support. And, and I think that's for me, it was part of that learning journey. I never went into that expecting to, to work through my own stuff, but I'm so, I'm so glad I did. And it also means that I can use those techniques and understand those techniques to be able to support other people. So yeah, def- I would definitely recommend uh, it, you know, exploring that as, as something to, to look at. Definitely. So then let's move to the emotional piece because physically you were making these changes mentally, you had more confidence. The NLP seemed to um, open the door to taking a look at some of the, the emotional pieces. How did you, how did you, no, like, what did you see as a change in the old version of you and what, let's say, NLP helped you discover? What was different about you emotionally? I think what I noticed was the, the barriers just started to come down a little bit. That self-preservation, self-protection had definitely kind of ramped up in, and I think it's that survival mode, isn't it, of just removing as much as possible so that you can focus on what you need to focus to move yourself forward and almost removing everything else so I know that I had almost kind of isolated myself and my son to just focus on the two of us and work things through so I noticed that the barriers start to come down of reintroducing friendships again I mean we know that with Um, domestic abuse it's very isolating in itself anyway so I think for me it was easy to keep that kind of closed off way of living Mm -hmm. whilst I rebuilt and moved things forward and then just I just felt so much more open to being around people and understanding people and I think the understanding of people's values and needs and intentions just starting to move that into new relationships and new friendships of understanding that you know, different people have different ways of being. And I've learned to love that. I've learned to love having those conversations and understanding you know, why people think differently based on their experiences and, and explore that more, that curious mindset, which again is NLP, coming into things with a childlike curiosity of, I don't know, I don't have all of the answers and so being able to explore that so much more open to learning and being with people and learning with people and knowing that I think it's that reassurance or self-assurance of knowing that you've been through an experience you've learned things along the way you've learned things about yourself along the way but knowing that you've got tools in the toolbox to be able to deal 
should something happen again and knowing that you can go into that and there might be some hurt along the way but knowing that you've got the tools to recover and respond and deal with it maybe in a different way and yeah. to help you to, to recover from those things too but not to lose out on the experiences because you're worrying about the negative or uncomfortable or the hurt that might happen in those right and and that's why healing takes time too because it's a you're working through so many things for to to release those barriers to open yourself up to other people to to trust again mm-hmm. to feel safe again this stuff takes time and it takes rebuilding the insides so you feel like okay i can i can safely do this and and even you know this is why we hear vulnerability is strength Mm. Not weakness, because when you can be vulnerable again after completely closing yourself off, that's you know that's that's not easy to do, and it does take the work, and you've done it. So, um, Zoe, what do you want to make sure everyone knows as we wrap up? Oh, that's a good question. I think just really just when you said that in that in your TED talk about regaining the power, and that this is. It's not always as much about you as you have taken it to be, but actually that you can control how you feel, how you respond and how you move on. And that taking back that power, that empowerment. I think what I did notice, and I think this does happen a lot, and we do this with with good intention, is that when people are going through a challenge, we as friends and as loved ones want to roll up our sleeves and get in there and help people to move forward and actually I found that having people around me that I knew were there to support me but let me roll my sleeves up and empowered me to take control and move myself forward especially considering the circumstance was most important I didn't want somebody taking control of my recovery of me moving on for I wanted that empowerment to take back that power to move myself on. And I think that is really important. It definitely is. And I always say transformation is a very personal process, Mm -hmm. not a lonely process, a very personal process, because you are, you're creating a new identity. You're taking the parts you like, you're leaving behind the parts that no longer serve the parts that you've outgrown. And you're creating this strong, healthy, whole, healed version of you that never would have had the opportunity to exist had that experience not happened. Wonderful. So where do we go to learn more about you and your work? So my business is Phoenix uh, for those very reasons that you've just described. So it's Phoenix Life and Wellbeing Coaching. Um, The website is there and I'm across all social media channels and more than happy to connect with people who have listened in, if this has resonated and they want to find out more, I would love to hear from people. Great. And we'll have all the information in the show notes. So Zoe, I want to thank you so much for just being such a beautiful example of uh, taking your situation and, and just deciding you're, you're here to be, do, and have more. And, and that's exactly what you've created. And that's what we can expect. It's not that these things won't happen. It's what we do with them. And I, I just can't help it. I think they are amazing opportunities when we use them to our advantage. And that's exactly what you did. And what a beautiful example for your son and for your clients and for our audience. So thank you so much for your wisdom and your insight. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Isn't it amazing how Zoe's experience with domestic abuse was so counterintuitive to her training as a police officer, but it's probably why she was even that much more intent on moving past her experience. Stay in touch with Zoe by going to phoenixlifecoach.co.uk and we'll have all of our information in the show notes at the pbtinstitute.com forward slash podcast. Here's my biggest takeaway. Getting into action moves you through your fears. So start taking action and start with something physical. Uh, Starting with something physical is a great idea. As you build up confidence, you can move towards the mental and then the emotional healing that all need your attention to. When you do, the barriers start to come down, the body, mind, and heart start to heal, and you feel empowered, inspired, and stronger because of what you've done to move through your experience. 
It's another example of face it, feel it, heal it, which is what we do within the PBT Institute, where we have everything you'd ever need to become your physical, mental, and emotional best. Community, support, certified coaches and practitioners you can schedule time with, daily classes on all kinds of interesting topics, curated experts teaching advanced strategies in the areas of health, mindset, spirituality, personal development. Imagine the most friendly, welcoming, and supportive place to become your best, and it's all online. There is nothing like this that exists. And I am so excited to welcome you. Go to the pbtinstitute.com forward slash join to learn more. Thanks for listening. Can't wait to be with you next time. And here's to your breakthrough.